Day 59 of the war against Hamas and three days after the end of the week-long pause in fighting, the IDF is launching its ground offensive into the southern Gaza Strip while restating the goal of removing the terrorist threat to Israel. More from ILTV's Steve Leibowitz. In the first days after the end of the Gaza truce, the Air Force has been steadily pounding Hamas targets from the air, paving the way for the expansion of the offensive into unvisited areas of northern Gaza and Khan Yunus and other Hamas strongholds in the south of the enclave. Heavy clashes are reported outside Khan Yunus after intelligence showed Hamas leaders entrenching in the city. The IDF is systematically taking out Hamas commanders and confronting Hamas gunmen wherever they are. היום צה"ל חיסל בהכוונה המודיעינית של שירות הביטחון הכללי ואגף המודיעין בתכלול של פיקוד הדרום את מפקד גדוד שתי באמצעות מטוס קרב מפקד גדוד שתי הוא הוביל את הלחימה בחודש האחרון במרחב של שתי תחת פיקודו יצאו גם מתווה פשיטה לשטח ישראל בטבח האכזרי ב-7 באוקטובר צה"ל ממשיך ומרחיב את הפעולה הקרקעית מול מרכזי הכובד של חמאס בכל רצועת עזה. בכל רצועת עזה, במקום שיש מרכז כובד של חמאס, צה"ל פועל. הכוחות נלחמים פנים אל פנים עם מחבלים ומחסלים אותם. The IDF is urging the Hamas Shijia Battalion to surrender. Naming them personally as targets, the army said their options are surrender or death. The IDF is continuing to urge Gazan civilians to evacuate to certain areas and is even circulating maps to civilians in advance of impending areas of active combat. Following the bombardments and warnings to evacuate certain areas, many displaced Gazans are heading toward Rafah in the south of the Gaza Strip to seek shelter. Meanwhile, intermittent incoming rocket fire is continuing. A synagogue in the southern city of Sterot suffered damage. After being hit by a Gaza rocket, there were no injuries as Sterot remains mostly evacuated of residents. The IDF continues bombardment of Hamas terrorists in Gaza and Hezbollah terrorists in Lebanon. Where will the people of Gaza go and what will the future of Gaza be? Now here to speak with us about the ongoing conflict and Israel's objectives in Gaza is Mordechai Kedar, Middle East expert and lecturer at Bar Ilan University. Mordechai, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Just to kick things off, Israel has resumed the war in Gaza with the uh, stated intent of destroying Hamas. Now, as they are now attacking all of Gaza, including southern Gaza, what is the IDF's plan for Gaza civilians uh, in order to protect them? First of all, the IDF uh, called upon them to go to the south of the southwest part of uh, the Gaza Strip um, where the Gut Katif was actually, and to, to concentrate that part so Israel can take part, can take care of the other parts of the of the strip. Uh, the only question is well, what will be after the war? After because Israel is determined to get rid of Hamas, both the military wing of Hamas and the civil wing of Hamas. And the question is what will be the day after Hamas is being uh, kicked out. Um, my, my my view is to establish six um, emirates means to divide the the strip to six areas because there are six concentrations of population in Gaza Strip. One is the Beit Laia Beit Hanun in the north. Then the to the south of it, uh, the, the city of Gaza. Another one in Dir el Balakh. Another one in Khan Yunis, uh, Abbasan, and Rafah in the in the south. These are the six parts uh, of the Gaza, and the local clans in each and every one of these parts should govern the place. No Hamas, no Abbas means no the PA, because the PA, first of all, is a failing entity. Secondly, uh, in in our view. There is no big difference between Hamas and the PA. Both are committed to eradicate Israel. In both sides, um, Israel does not appear on their maps. And both are teaching and educating their children to fight against Israel until the demise of the state of Israel. So from our point of view, the PA is no option. And therefore, the only option is the local clans who should um, govern themselves, of course, with Israeli support, 
or Egyptian support, whoever wants to support them, yet they have to govern themselves and not to be governed by the, neither the PLO nor Hamas. Now, in terms of, of the hostages, is the IDF seeking actively to rescue these remaining 137 hostages? And if so, what options are really available to them in terms of this rescue? Uh, the IDF doesn't reveal uh, what its plans are, yet I believe that they want to maintain pressure, military pressure on Hamas, to a degree that Hamas will offer or will uh, surrender to, the, to Israel's demands to release all these hostages in the lowest price. Now, in terms of the, the international response that we've been seeing, do you think Israel has the necessary support from global powers like the U.S. to actually finish this job? And my impression is that the world uh, doesn't care so much because the Gaza war is already almost 60 days and it became no news and there is nothing special to report every every day. And the public opinion in Europe, in America, uh, more or less doesn't care so much about this. Any, anyway, these public opinions did not pay too much attention to what happens in Syria or in Iraq or in uh, Sudan or in Libya or in Yemen. So uh, this, the, the interest in what happens in Gaza is anyway fading. So uh, in my humble view, uh, Israel does have at the time to work slowly and you know, as, as securely as uh, possible in order to uh, not to put our soldiers in danger and in order to carry out the the missions means to get rid of Hamas militarily and the 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 civil wing of Hamas as well uh, in the way which uh, will uh, make sure that uh, uh, this uh, Hamastan uh, which actually the ISIS stand in Gaza will never return. Dr. Mordechai Kedar, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Well, as the Gaza war continues, so too does the hostage crisis. Despite the return of dozens of kidnapped Israelis during the temporary truce, many more still remain in Gaza. ILTV's Devo Klein has the latest. Nearly two full months in Gaza, and little is known about the well-being of the 137 remaining hostages being held by Hamas. Since their kidnapping, the Red Cross has not visited the hostages, and many of the captives still in Gaza were known to be seriously injured at the time of the kidnapping. Of the captives still in Gaza, 126 of them are Israeli citizens, and 11 are foreign nationals. While Hamas has attempted to portray themselves as humanitarian, with an elaborate propaganda campaign surrounding the release of hostages last week, the reality remains that even the youngest Israeli hostage is still being held in Gaza. Kfir Bibas, 10 months old, and Ariel Bibas, 4 years old, are still being held by Hamas terrorists. After mounting pressure to release the Bibas family, Hamas has claimed they were killed already, though this claim has not been verified or confirmed by Israel. Of the remaining hostages, 10 of them are older than 75, 117 are men and 20 are women. These hostages are not combatants. Many of them were civilians who are cruelly being held in captivity. Romy Gonen, a young woman who was badly injured and then kidnapped from the Nova Music Festival, is one of the faces who remains in Gaza. Another is Noa Al-Gamani, whose kidnapping video pleading for her life on the back of a motorcycle was shared globally after October 7th. While the war has resumed, Israeli officials and the IDF have repeatedly confirmed that the safe return of all hostages is of the highest priority. Experience the power of truth with ILTV News. If you're looking for quality content and captivating visuals, join our news community and become an integral part of our team as we embark on a mission to unveil the real Israel, dismantling the web of lies and misinformation that surround reporting on Israel. By subscribing to ILTV News, you will not only have access to the latest updates, but you will also amplify our message, creating a ripple effect that carries the truth far and wide. Subscribe today and help reshape the narrative. Available on the web, Android, and Apple. Israel's national security headquarters has issued a new travel warning, raising the threat level to two for parts of Western Europe, Brazil, Argentina, and Australia. 
This comes following an uptick in anti-Semitism globally, as well as a rise in terrorist threats against Israelis and Jews. Israel stated they are not advising Israelis not to travel completely, but to exercise extra caution. A level three warning was also issued for South Africa, Eritrea, and some Asian countries. Well, the United States has seemingly changed positions when it comes to the future of the Gaza Strip long term, initially implying that they supported Palestinian Authority control over Gaza, which was roundly rejected by Israel. ILTV's William Sharon has the latest. The United States and Israel have been in an ongoing discussion about the long term future of Gaza when it comes to the governance with Israel flat out rejecting the possibility of the Palestinian Authority to rule over Gaza in the immediate aftermath of the war. While U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris claimed earlier in the week that the U.S. would like to see the Palestinian Authority eventually govern Gaza, Kirby confirmed yesterday that the Palestinian Authority lacks the credibility to rule Gaza. Right now, the Palestinian Authority doesn't have that credibility. Uh, so what we want to see is a reformed uh, PA, a revitalized Palestinian Authority that can, uh, that can have a voice and some measure of control over governance in Gaza. We don't believe the PA is in a position right now to be in a credible control of governance in Gaza. These comments came in the aftermath of Prime Minister Netanyahu confirming that Israel does not intend to allow the Palestinian Authority to return to Gaza. Yesterday, Kirby also confirmed that Israel is taking tremendous measures to avoid civilian casualties. We believe that they have been receptive to our messages here in terms of trying to minimize civilian casualties. And I would tell you, we saw that as they went into, into North Gaza. They did it in a more precise way, a smaller way. Uh, and just in the last 24, 48 hours, George, they published online a map of, of places where people could go uh, to avoid combat and where they could go, where they could uh, find uh, safety from combat. Uh, there's not a whole lot of modern militaries that would do that. Despite the change in approach from the U.S., the administration is still pushing the eventual advancement of a Palestinian state. A move criticized by Israeli Strategic Affairs Minister Ron Dermer, who pointed out that the responding to the attacks of October 7th by prompting statehood would be rewarding terrorism. Israel is hitting Hezbollah targets in southern Lebanon in retaliation for cross-border attacks from Lebanon as the IDF renewed its offensive in Gaza. This is amid reports that Western and Arab states are pressuring Hezbollah to evacuate the border area. More from ILTV's Steve Leibowitz. The IDF launched deadly retaliatory strikes after a Hezbollah missile wounded 12 soldiers on the northern border. The injuries came when an army vehicle was hit by an anti-tank missile fired by Hezbollah terrorists. The wounded were taken to Ziv Medical Center in Tzfat with light to moderate injuries. Hezbollah claimed responsibility for the attack on the army vehicle targeted near Moshav Beit Hillel in the eastern Galilee. Soldiers were wounded today by mortars as well. IDF artillery targeted the sources of the fire and shelled several targets in South Lebanon. Fighter jets retaliated by hitting Hezbollah targets in Lebanon. Even with the exchanges continuing, several Arab countries, the U.S. and France, are reportedly in talks in Beirut to encourage the Lebanese government to take steps to de-escalate the region. Israeli media reports say that Washington, Paris, and certain Middle East nations presented a proposal to keep Hezbollah away from the Israel-Lebanon border. The framework demands the withdrawal of Hezbollah to north of the Litani River and the integration of an international force in border areas, including the Sheba Farms and the Mount Dove area north of the Rajar village. The withdrawal of Hezbollah from the border is stipulated in the UN Security Council Resolution 1701, which ended the Second Lebanon War in 2006, but is ignored by the Iranian-backed terrorists. In the Red Sea, a U.S. warship and several commercial vessels came under attack from Yemenite Houthi rebels during what terrorists falsely claimed as an attack on two Israeli-linked ships. The USS Kearney responded to the assault and shot down three Houthi drones. More from ILTV's Devo Klein. Deployed in the Red Sea to counter threats posed during the Israel-Hamas war, the USS Kearney warship came to the aid of British commercial ships during an hours-long assault claimed by Yemen's Houthi rebels. The attack potentially marked a major escalation in a series of maritime attacks in the Middle East linked to the Israel-Hamas war as multiple vessels found themselves in the crosshairs of a Houthi assault. Israel placed the blame on Iran. Iran. 
וזה בעיה עולמית, בעיה אזורית, ואנחנו צריכים לראות איך העולם נותן לדבר הזה מענה. חופש השיט הופך להיות מסוכן באזור הזה של העולם. The Karni is a guided missile destroyer that has already shot down multiple rockets the Houthis have fired toward Israel so far in the war. It was damaged in the attack and no injuries were reported on board. The Karni responded after hearing from the Bahamas flagged bulk carrier Unity Explorer that it was under attack by missile fire. The Karni shot down three drones during the exchange. The Unity Explorer was struck by rockets while sailing around 35 nautical miles of Yemen's western coast. The affected vessel issued distress calls of piracy. The attacked vessel's ownership and management was linked to Dan David Ungar, a British citizen listed as an Israeli resident. A Houthi military spokesman said there would be more attacks. <laughs> The Houthis have been launching a series of attacks on vessels in the Red Sea, as well as launching drones and missiles targeting Israel amid the war. Last month, the Houthis seized a transport ship linked to Israel in the Red Sea off Yemen. The rebels still hold the vessel near the port city of Hodeida. Well, it's true that anti-Israel sentiment as well as anti-Semitism has exploded in recent weeks. There are also positive developments of supporters speaking out for Israel and for Israeli hostages. ILTV's William Sharon has the latest. This week, Israeli actress Gal Gadot joined the chorus of condemnation of the UN women for their hypocrisy on the October 7th attacks. Gadot, who has been largely silent on the political issues, took to Instagram condemning the barbarity of the Hamas and calling on international groups, including the United Nations, to demand that Hamas release every single woman hostage immediately. Gadot is not alone in expressing support for hostages. This week, Beyonce also made headlines in relation to now-released Israeli nine-year-old hostage, Emily Hand. Emily Hand, an Irish Israeli, was kidnapped and held by Hamas for over 50 days before being released during the pause in fighting in Gaza. Following her release, her father spoke about the ordeal to CNN where he mentioned how Emily is a massive fan of Beyonce, and his goal was to bring her to a show. Within a few days, Israeli media reported that a member of Beyonce's team was contacted, who confirmed that Emily Hand is personally invited to any show anywhere in the world. While it cannot undo the imaginable suffering Emily went through, it will certainly bring a smile to her face in the aftermath of the October 7th tragedy. In Israel's southern Negev desert, an oasis exists for those with disabilities, a place of nourishing, support, and healing powered by Jewish National Fund USA Philanthropy. This therapeutic horseback riding center in Grofit changes lives, ensuring affordability. Now evacuee victims of Hamas's October 7th attack also visit, finding renewed spirits from an unexpected source, horses. In a time of darkness, this oasis offers light through new strength, joy, and of course, community. Joining us today via Zoom is Ehud Katsaf, therapist. Ehud, thank you so much Hello. for joining us. Thank you. Ehud, what key therapeutic goals and objectives do you work on with these kids, and, and how do you tailor these goals to the individual needs? Um, when we start the sessions of uh, therapeutics rides, um, we meet the kids and the parents. And after these two meetings, we know a little bit more about uh, the kids that comes here. And from that, we can uh, put some goals that we want to achieve. Uh, it could be uh, like a uh, eight and a seven years old boy that uh, rides with me a couple of years. And when he started, uh, his uh, self-esteem was really, really down. So we work about control the horse, take the horse, no. uh, it, and it's help him uh, in this daily basis. And uh, of course, also for the, all the kids that come now from the Gaza uh, border and from the Lebanon border, uh, that starts to be from the October 7, starts to come to us. Uh, we let them to have fun a little bit uh, to um, to talk about the things they saw, the things they they hear, 
and they it remind them a little bit also of the home because they're in the kibbutzim they they was living it there is a lot of trees and flowers and and uh, animals now they live in a lot it's in hotels it's a little bit more city it's not something that they used to so they really like to come here and uh, ride with us so this therapeutic riding, it, it often emphasizes the bond between the riders and horses. So could you just elaborate a little bit on the significance of this bond in the healing process? And, and how are you guys fostering this at the center, especially with the children, with the younger uh, Israelis who are coming there now after the October 7th attack? Uh, we are in the center. We really believe in the triangle between the horse, the rider, and uh, the therapeutic instructors, uh, but most important is the connection between the riders and the horse. Uh, in a straight line, a horse is feeling you when you're there. If you are scared, he will come to you. If you are feeling confidence, he will feel you. So when we are working with kids that comes here, they're a little bit afraid, they're a little bit scared. Uh, I had a couple of two weeks ago. A five-year uh, girl that's really scared of animals, really scared of big noises. Each because they uh, run away from home. There was uh, bombings and and stuff. So now each noise is a little is a little bit scared her. Uh, the horse noise was scared her. We we pet her a little bit. We walk her a little bit. It's really help her uh, to be more uh, more in control, more in charge. Uh, also, the fate that they have with us is really helped them, but in the end of the day, they come here because they like the horses. Of course. Uh, well, we are running out of time, so I'm just going to ask you one more question. Can you describe how people react, how uh, JNF USA supporters react when they see this incredible uh, therapeutic riding center and the important work that you guys are doing, bringing uh, especially those who have been traumatized by the events of October 7th? Uh, we have a lot of uh, support and love from the uh, supporters that see us uh, when they come here. Uh, without, we are in a little bit in the middle of the desert. Uh, it's a quiet place, uh, and they like to come. They like to come here and to this quiet place with the animals and with the horses. We have the birds. We have the we have the trees. And uh, they saw the kids that ride here. They saw them. They talked with them a little bit. Some, some of them also ride the horses. And they really like to, to come and be part of, of, our, of our job. And uh, we thank them for that. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to hear about this important work that you guys are doing. And keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Let's take a look at the weather forecast. Mostly clear skies tonight with temperatures reaching lows of 17 degrees Celsius or 62 degrees Fahrenheit. Then tomorrow, cloudy skies and light rain are expected with highs of around 24 degrees Celsius or 76 degrees Fahrenheit. That's all for today's news. For more updates from Israel on all your devices, check out our ILTV channels, subscribe to our ILTV newsletter, and don't forget to check out our new and improved website, ILTV.tv with all the latest news from the heart of the State of Israel. I'm Emily Schrader, be well, and thank you so much for watching.